everybody, Bill here. I'm working on the uh, model. I've already got all five positions laid out. Uh, they are merged as one piece now. And put back in position. Uh, so what I've done is I made another block here. Then I'm going to actually extend the height of the part right here so that it goes up higher. Then it gives me a little more rigidity, but less flex when it's mounted on the pegboard. So I'm just trying to reduce the flex on it. So I've created this part, it's 117 millimeters, 10 by 40, uh, that should give me enough uh, height. I'm going to move that part into position, get lined up with the other part, hopefully uh, that looks pretty well lined up. I'm actually going to bring it all the way over to the edge of this part, so it lines up right like that. Make it look like one piece, like it was intentional, like it's always been designed to be that way. And then we'll select the other piece by hitting shift and select. And then we're going to merge it. So we just combine. And it makes it all one piece now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go, in, go ahead and we're going to save this now. I'm going to save as. And I put it in my local library. So go to libraries and then local library. And I'm going to save it here as that part. And say save. And now I've got another part. And it made two of them. I don't need both. But okay. Right now I'm going to remove it because I'm going to work on another part. So I have a part that I'm going to bring in from a library. Or, uh, so something I've already got designed from before, or I found on Thingiverse. Just so I get the pegs. And that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm, make, I'm going to do the pegs. So uh, if I remember how to do this, it was not an easy thing to do to import something. Uh, they made it very difficult. I don't know why they made it so difficult. Uh, open recent. Nope, not that. Uh, library. Uh, downloads. Maybe in downloads I can go to. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Let's see if I can go to a different directory here. I have a lot of stuff on my computer, by the way. Um, no, 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 no. Not there. Okay, not in download. Um, no, not there. Back to home. Uh, I remember how to do this. It's really, they did not make this an easy thing to do. did this. That's, that's the funny thing. I just did this playing around before I went to the video and now I freaking can't get it there. Let's go back to my Ender 3. Let's see if we can do it here. Uh, no, 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 no. Where was it? Ah, open file. So I have this pegboard screwdriver holder that I'm going to import because I'm going to modify it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the screw holder things and I'm going to get rid of all of this. I'm just going to keep two peg holders for it. So I'm going to get rid of all that by uh, doing a subtract. So I'm going to bring a cube in. I am going to make the cube, uh, let's say 60 long or width 60. And I'm going to line it up here so I can get it right up against the edge here. As close as I can. Looks like I'm, looks like I'm a little bit off on it. Of course, I can move this. See if I can move this piece. Then try and move that piece. Nope, it's the same thing. Um, so that's in the what direction is that? X direction. I want to move it uh, plus. So I'm going to move that, translate, 
Next version. What five? See, that's enough. Let's see if that gets me close enough. Okay, so it overlaps a little bit when I do that. So 0.5 is too much. Let's say it's 0.3. Nope. Too much still. 0.2. I want to. I don't want to really remove any of the material for that part. I want to keep that as sturdy as I can make it. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna increase the size of this whole thing on the other two directions. Obviously the length is not long enough, so I need to change that. I go here, go to scale. Uh, right now I have it at a length of 60. I'm gonna make it eight. Isn't that nice? It changed all of them. I hate when it does that. I don't know why it did that. Now I have to move the X again. Why are they locked? Oh, uh, maintain proportions. So let's go and do that. Control Z. Put it back. And then I can go here. I don't want to maintain proportions. we we'll make that 80. And then I'm going to drag it back that way. I'm going to go 0.2 again. But I got long enough now that I can it'll subtract out what I want to subtract. I just gotta move that X again by uh, translating it. Move my X point two. And that's getting me close enough but that's that it's good. And I'm gonna change my height by scaling again. And I'll go back to scaling and then we're gonna change the height of this to uh, I don't know, forty. Uh, again it changed the proportions instead of went back to maintain proportions. I don't know why it did that. So I'll change that height again to 40. And we're going to change that width to uh, 40. And that will get rid of all the stuff that I don't want on that end. I'm also going to get I'm also going to get rid of these guys to uh, you know to not have that be there. It doesn't need to be there for my, for my model. So now I'm going to select this, and I'm going to select this, and I'm going to say subtract, and I'm going to say uh, nice. It did combine. I didn't want to combine. Control Z, back out. Uh, select. Select that one first. Select this one second. And then we're going to go subtract. And I am going to choose that guy. Update. Okay, so now we got that cut, right? Cool. Now we're going to get rid of all of this part. So drag this guy. It's weird that it still shows it there because it, it's gone. I don't know why it does that. We're going to drag this over to the center here. And we'll get that kind of, not exactly center, but, but close enough to center. And now we're going to create another cube, which we're going to make a little bit wider. There we have it there. We're going to change that to uh, 25. And we're going to change the width to 60 and see if that is enough. Nope, not enough. Change to 80. That'll make it plenty long. And then we're going to change the height to 30. That's, that's what we get right there. That gives me a long enough cube and a big enough cube to cover the whole thing. I want it to basically butt up against the, uh, the back wall here, this back wall. To within reason. Obviously not touching. We do that. We get past the edge on both ends. We're going to make this actually bigger now. I'm actually going to make this go down farther by making this uh, a height 35. And I'm going to lower this down through the bottom. Which I should have done on the other one which is probably why it still shows me some stuff. I'll do that. And we'll select this guy. We'll select this guy. And now we're going to do a subtract. And I'm subtract the cube, update, enter, 
So here, so now we got this just the pegboard holder part of it. And I'm going to save that. Okay, save as. And I'm going to go to my library, my local library, and I'm going to save this as peg text. I'm going to go home and go P E G B B O A R D pegboard text. Save. So that will make that be what I want to be. Hopefully that's, that's good enough. Let's see what happens if I go back to my inner three and I say let's go to my library and my local library and grab my pegs and we'll put it on there. And look at that. Now there's no hidden pieces anywhere. And now we'll go back to my library again. We're going to grab that guy. Pegboard hex right there. We'll get it on the screen here. We'll grab the other part. We're going to bring it over here. And we're going to rotate that part. Obviously, it's not going to be in the direction we want. We want it 180 degrees different. Probably didn't rotate that properly. So I'm going to do them with Control Z. Get it back the way it was. I'm going to grab the part. I'm going to go to here. I'm going to say rotate. I'm going to say 90. Oops, this is 180. This is 180. And then I'll get that in the right direction now. And then we'll move this into position. And I'm actually going to embed that part into the other part so that I can get it really, make it really part of the device, part of what I'm making. So it looks just like that. Now we're going to select this and select this. And then we're going to say combine. So now this is all one part. We now have my pegboard holder here. So the only other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to save this. Well, let's save it right now. Save as. Go back to my libraries. Go back to local library. And we're going to call it the pegboard hex wrench holder. And I say save. And it puts a second one on there. I don't know why, but there we go. And I'll have this saved. This is now a part. Why it does that, I don't know. Okay, okay, so now we got one part, has all of our stuff on it. We've now created what we want. What I want to do now, I actually want to go through and I can put text in this, I believe. And I'm going to put the size of my wrench. And since I'm doing this twice, one for uh, ANSI standard tools and one for metric tools, I am going to uh, make a slight change to it that will allow me, so I'll do this one which will have you know, 10, 8, 5, 3, 2 and a half. And so I'll have the numbers for each of the wrenches put into it is the, is the idea. And that will be how I'm going to, uh, to do that. And then I'll do this, then I'll save it with that with all the metric part numbers on it and I'm going to bring in another one. Again, the, the original part, I'll bring it back in, and I'll put in the NSI, American Standards part, uh, part numbers, or the size numbers that are into the net. And that'll complete both sets for, uh, for my holder. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's going to, well, I'm going to start now, I guess, with the text. So let's see, I forgot how to. Okay, so I figured it's finally about how it's done. Right here is the is a text tool. If you click on that text tool, they'll click on it, it'll put up a text here. Over on the side is the actual text that's in the text field. So I, what I did was I made, I made them different sizes and I moved them into position. I did 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 6 millimeter, 5, 3, and 2.5. I'm going to delete that text. It's gone. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just 
They're, they actually come out raised already. I put them partway embedded into the surface. So I'm just going to select the text, select the, the holder, and then I'm going to tell it subtract. And then here I'll say I want to subtract text 4. And hit update. If I click on here, you now see that it says 5 millimeter is embedded into the surface now. So I repeat that on the 6 millimeter. And we go subtract. And we go text. And we say update. And you notice it's a little shade of the Z right there is gone. It, it, it's embedded now. It's embedded text into the surface of the part. Then we go to the 8 millimeter and select the other part again. And we do subtract yet again. And we go to text. And we say update. And there we go. And just repeat one more one more time. And subtract and update. Right, that's one update. And uh, it didn't work. other books okay. I'm not subtracting. Now you see I got all these nice neat numbers uh, cleanly into the part. And uh, so when I go to print this part, it will now have all of those in it. And I'm going to save this as metric, as a metric version. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to say save as. And I'll go to my library and I'll go to my local library. And I already have pegboard wrench holder, but I'm going to change that name to PEX. So I'll change the metric hex bridge holder and we'll save it. And now I'm going to get rid of it. Now it's out of my way. So now I'm going to reload the one part. So I'm now going to my library uh, folder, library, my local library. And I'm going to grab my peg board holder which we have here. Okay. So it says it's a separate part. Well, no, this one part. Okay, never mind. This one part. Okay, so we have this all set to go. That ain't the one I want. Damn it. Did I do something wrong? Did I not save the other part? That may have been what happened. That would suck. I didn't save it with the pegs. There we go. All right, we'll get that back in the center pretty much. And we just repeat this process so now you get to see the whole thing from scratch. So here's the part we already made. Now I'm going to go in here and grab text. And I got it on there now. And now I'm going to change it to, let's find my largest of my non-metrics, which is one quarter inch. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to put in one quarter. So one slash four. The default size of this obviously is 24 point. Uh, 24 point might be a little too uh, big for this. Remember? Uh, yeah, it'll fit in the in a quarter inch space. But you got to get smaller as you go down. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it 20 point. So I got one quarter there now. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to go up here and hit duplicate. And I got a second one. I'll drag it down here. I am going to change it to my next size, which looks like. will be 7.30 seconds will be my next size. Seems weird. Oh, okay. So, 7.30 seconds is basically uh, about an eighth of an inch away from a quarter of an inch. Not like, but close. So 7.30 seconds is my next size. So I'll go here and I'll change this text to 7 slash 32. 
and now I have 730 seconds in there. And now I'll duplicate that. And I'll move my duplicated one down. Now you can see it's already too big for the space here. So now we're going to go to a smaller size. I'm going to go 14, I think. And we'll use 14 on that. Oops. I want to move that. I want to move this. And now we're going to change that number to whatever the next smaller next size is. So I believe that'll be this guy, which is 3 sixteenths. And I have 3 sixteenths. And that's my next one. And I'll just grab that and duplicate again. Now grab it. I'll drag it down here. And then I'll change that number to whatever my next one is. Which looks like it'll be this one's probably one eighth. Nope, five thirty seconds. I don't have a one eighth. No, anyway. Five thirty seconds is the next one. So five seconds three two. And now we have five thirty seconds. And control. Well, I'm doing control C, but it's just, I want to use duplicate. I want to use, use their tools. And control C, so I move everything. Grab that guy, bring it down here. Now you can see it's getting a little small. Well, again, I don't know why it's getting smaller, but okay. So I'll change that to 12. Oh, I, went to, I think I went to 10. Yeah, I'm the other one. So I'll put 10 here. And then I go to my next size down after the. Uh, 5.30 seconds. After 5.30 seconds, it looks like it's one of these two. So it's 1 eighth and 7 sixty-fourths. So 1 eighth is next on my sizes. So now we're going to put 1 eighth. Okay. And that gives me my text for there. Maybe move it. And then we've got text for that one eighth. And then we'll duplicate that. And hopefully I can get in here. Uh, move that up. That's right. Here it needs to be even smaller, as you can tell. And I went down, I think, uh, I think I went down to eight. You see, it barely fits in there. We need to be smaller than eight, so we're going to six. And that'll give me enough space in there. I don't know if it's going to show up when I go to print. But now all you gotta do is just select one like you already got selected. You hit shift and select the, the background here. And then we go and hit subtract. And then you just say, take and select the text and say update. And then you click off to the side and it will show you now it's got an embedded text. You could leave it as a raised text if you wanted to. But I'm, I like doing embedded. I think it looks cool embedded versus raised. But of course then you have the problem of uh, with embedded text that it will uh, fill with crap. But even with rays, the letter you start getting crap in between the letters. So no matter what you do, you're going to end up with, with, crap, with crap in it. Let me just repeat. And then we go to the next one. And we repeat again. Subtract. Next. Update. And I'm going to drag it down, select that guy, and we will subtract again, and choose the text, we'll say update, we'll grab that text, choose the back again, and we'll subtract again, and choose the text, and we'll say update, 
and striking is done. And then drag this down, grab a quarter, back, the back part, contract, text, update, and done. So now I have metric and standard American sizes for my hex wrenches. So now I've got something that I can print and mount, and uh, that should do the trick. So I hope that uh, was entertaining for you. Uh, sorry, I ran into such a problem with text. I couldn't see, you know, nothing says the name of that perimeter there. Unfortunately, it's not popping up like it. If you go up here, you'll see things pop up. You click here, there's nothing. These should pop up too. To tell you what these tools are like, that is text. Nice of it to know. Can you tell that's text? I would have put a big T there for text. I put T E X T or something. You know, just to let you know that's text. You can't tell by looking at that that that's text. It looks like a flat bar. So it's kind of dumb. But anyway, we're done. We have it finished. That's the second one. Uh, so now you've seen the whole process. Now I think what happened now is you convert this into an SQL file. Uh, I'm going to save this as my uh, standard. I'll call it A and S I. That's what the real. I, be, I believe that's the real name. So this would be A and S I. H E X W R E N C H H O L E E R. So A and S I holder, and that we're done. There we go. So now if you want to export, you just go here, uh, click on the part, I guess. And you say, export. Uh, STL file. And you say, export. And I am going to move this now to a different place that I put things. It's going to be in my projects, uh, 3D printing projects. And uh, I, mean, I don't think I have a folder for my own designs yet. But I will make my own folder now. I'll make a new folder. My designs. And I will find it now. It'll be back up here somewhere. There's my designs. And I'm going to call this uh, AMSI PEG DOARD AGX. W R E N H Rich Holder and save. So now I have an STL file exporter that I can print on any printer I want. I am going to now remove this part. I am going to now go back and import a part from the library, which would be my metric one. And I will center it in the middle here. And then I'm going to say edit and I'm going to export STL. Export and it goes back to the same folder I was in, and this will be Mexican Texture Folder STL. Save. Done. So now I have both of them in STL form, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I guess I'll put these up on Thingiverse, I guess. But why not? I don't know if anybody's going to want to print them or not, but anyway, uh, you've seen how it's done, you've seen how I made the part. Um, you got to see my confusion when I couldn't figure out where the damn text thing was, even though it's right there. Because you, know, you can't tell if that's a text. And nothing tells you it's a text. That made it very difficult. But uh, anyway, we're now done. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the, set, the video series. This is it will be the end of part two. I will edit the other stuff together and make it all one video. So it'll be two parts. The first part where I was first modeling all the little... Uh, the little curved pieces, you know, the, the pieces here where I made the holes through them and everything. So that'll be the first part of the video. And the second part of the video will be where I uh, added the back, added the, the actual peg holders, and then uh, added the text. So, and did both uh, ANSI and uh, metric. So thank you for tuning in and have a great time. I will also put the links for the parts in the description of the video run got. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. Build it out. <laughs>